All right, we're going to talk today about Chapter 6, Section 1. And the main point here is the 13 colonies are going to start to get a little upset with the colonists. The relationships are going to change. And one of the main reasons that they changed, or the relationships before the war, the colonies largely governed themselves for hundreds of years. For 100 years, the king left them alone. They were an ocean away. Everybody left them alone. It wasn't an issue. But after the war, Britain started to tighten its control. So it changed after the French Indian War. And that's why we start with the French Indian War, because of that change that starts that ball rolling down the hill that's going to cause the American Revolution. The king first gets involved with the colonies by sending 10,000 troops to the colonies. Now, the reason he sends the 10,000 troops was he wanted to maintain peace between the colonists and the Native Americans. He issued the proclamation of 1763 that basically said nobody could cross the Appalachians, which made the settlers very angry, like we talked about in the last section, because they thought that land was theirs. After winning the war, they had the right to settle the land. This was prime land um, in the Ohio River Valley. So King George decided to send 10,000 troops to the colonies to enforce his proclamation. Some of the effects of this decision. Well, for the British, um, they had to house the troops. It was very expensive. And so an effect of the proclamation was the pa Parliament passed the Quartering Act, which basically required all colonists to house all British soldiers. So imagine somebody coming to your house, knocking on the door and saying, um, we're going to leave two soldiers here. You're going to feed them. You're going to let them stay here and for free. And so they didn't like that. And also they felt there was an invasion of their privacy because they felt the colonists, um, or the, excuse me, the British Redcoats, and they got that name because of their red coats they wore, we're going to watch them or monitor them. It'd be like, you guys happen to have a teacher spend a night at your house. Um, you wouldn't feel right because you feel that we would judge you or discipline you for things you did at home outside of school. The colonial effect was these new laws created great anxiety in the colonies. They feared that Parliament intended to use the troops to control their movements and restrict their freedoms like I mentioned earlier. So, going back to the question on your homework, why did Parliament pass new laws governing the colonies? Well, they needed to pay off their debt. They spent a lot of money in the French Indian War, they borrowed a lot of money, and now it was time to pay that money back, and they also had to enforce the proclamation and to cover the cost of protecting and ruling the colonies. Next question on your homework, why were the colonists threatened by the Parliament's new laws? explain why the colonists disagree with Parliament. Well, first of all, the colonies, for the most part, had managed their own affairs. Like I said, for a hundred years, the king was never involved and really didn't man, you know, mind what was going on uh, across the Atlantic Ocean. But Parliament's new laws started to restrict and threaten the colonists' freedom. And that's going to start a theme of liberty and freedom. And they're going to start to... Um, they're going to miss that freedom they had, and that's why they're going to have that desire to create a document to free themselves from tyranny and the king. How'd they pose these new acts? Well, first of all, the most successful way was they organized boycotts, a widespread refusal to buy British goods. This was effective because it affected the merchants in Britain in their pocketbooks that money talks, and if you can affect somebody losing money, it, uh, it's going to happen. Just like in the NFL right now, with all the controversy in the NFL, these sponsors are going to start pulling out. And the NFL is, you know, for example, Budweiser spends $200 million a year in advertising for the NFL. If they threaten to pull that money, things will change, and that's what's happening. Money always talks. They also got a little active. Uh, the Sons of Liberty, they spoke out. And they also perform other acts of protest, like uh, the Stamp Act Congress was organized to protest the Stamp Act, and they sent a petition to the king. And actually, the Stamp Act Congress was successful because Parliament is going to repeal the Stamp Act. So why was boycotting British goods an effective way to protest the Stamp Act? I already kind of said it, is when you can affect them economically or affect them when it comes to money, money talks, and it put pressure on Parliament to repeal the act the business owners in Britain would 
was we're also complaining to the parliament we're losing money because the colonies aren't buying our goods it was very successful I explain how the colonists reacted when parliament took over the assembly's power to tax so when the colonists started to lose their power to represent themselves with taxing they were upset and they formed the Stamp Act Congress to protest Parliament's power to tax the colonies. The colonies also boycotted British goods. Um, it wasn't about the amount of money because the colonists were actually paying less taxes than they were in England. It was just about the concept of having representation over themselves and making their own decisions. Some of the taxes and acts in this section, the Stamp Act we talked about, that was the first direct tax on the colonists. But the first tax was the Sugar Act. But the Sugar Act basically lowered the original tax because they just started to enforce it and they started to um, look for um, black market or people that were bootlegging sugar into the 13 colonies and actually have them pay a tax. So the Sugar Act was the first tax. The Stamp Act was the first direct tax that they felt. It was on the people. The Courting Act, we talked about it. The Courting Act was... Um, where they were forced to house the soldiers. And the reason the king did that was because it was expensive bringing the 10,000 troops to the colonies. And then the last one is called the Declaratory Act, which is at the end of the section, and it'll start in the next section, I believe. And this one is kind of, it's not a tax, it's just the king and parliament says, we're going to repeal the Stamp Act, but we have the right, we have the power to at any time tax you because we're the boss and you're not. And so it's kind of like your parents. You ask your parents to do something, and they say no, and you keep bugging them. Come on, come on, can I, can I? And finally they give in, and then they say, but next time, no means no. I'm sure you've heard that before. That's basically what the Declaratory Act was. We're going to get rid of this tax, but next time we can tax you if we want to. Last slide, why would Britain's new laws have convinced Americans that their freedom was under threat? Well... Parliament did not consult the colonial assemblies before they imposed new laws and taxes. Soldiers were also kept in their colonies. Quarter Act, these two reasons is what started to make the colonists get worried about losing their freedom and being controlled by a tyrant. And it's going to lead into section two where we start to get a little more defiant and we're actually gonna to start to see some bloodshed. Thank you.